Prince. Let me show you how easy it is and delicious meatball. Oh my god. Yo guys, what is up? Max or Diablo 4 video, and today we are going over my Meatball Sorceress guide. Now, this is the build that I started, and I made a guide for 1 through 50, and then I made an updated guide 50 through 75. Um, so if you're not to this point yet, if you're not at endgame, I've got two great guides to walk you through how to get built up to this build. This is the endgame guide. This is where we get really serious about our Paragon board, min-maxing all of our stats. I'm going to be breaking down everything that you need to know about what is possibly my favorite build that I've played in Diablo 4. Uh, genuinely, this build is so much fun. We're at 200% movement speed, so we're flying around dungeons. Uh, we explode massive packs of enemies. We do Nightmare 100. We we do uber lilith we have 75 percent crit chance on this build which is the highest crit chance i've ever gotten to on any build that i've played uh it's just a blast and i hope you enjoy this build as much as i have hope you guys enjoy the video let's get right into it so we're going to start with like a general overview of how this build actually functions and then we'll get into the specifics of the skill tree paragon board gear and everything else that you need to know so uh, i've got our little target dummies right here and i just want to show you guys one thing uh, because it's been a little bit of a misconception with this build. So if I cast my fireball into this group, you're going to see these explosions. Um, there's our dot damage. Let's cast another fireball. Right there. We hit for a million. We hit for 900k. So that delayed damage explosion right there is actually from the X-Falls Corroded Signet. This is a really important part of this build. X-Falls reads that our lucky hit damage over time effects have a chance to erupt dealing 40,000 base damage. As you can see, this is 40,000 base damage. On this build, it's hitting upwards of 2 million uh, when we do our full rotation, which is massive amounts of damage for us. Now, you may be wondering, what are we doing to get this to proc? Well, the first thing to understand is, one, it doesn't scale off of the dot that triggers it. So my dot can be a little bit of damage. It can be a lot of damage. Um, it doesn't matter. It just we need to have a damage over time effect on the enemies. There's another a million proc. Um, and so what we're able to do is we're using the enchantment fireball enchantment. Now, as this says, any damage from our skills is going to apply a burning damage uh, that's going to happen over eight seconds. Now, this actually inherits the lucky hit chance from the fire bolt, even though it doesn't say it has lucky hit chance. It does. Otherwise, we wouldn't be proccing X-Falls on this because Fireball doesn't inherently have a damage over time. Fireball cannot proc the Corroded Signet for us. It's only when we pair the enchantment on Fireball that it adds a damage over time to it. And now we can proc these damage explosions to like make us do way more damage. So the very first thing to understand about this build is that Yes, our fireballs are being cast on a group of enemies and we're doing a ton of damage with them. But for anything chunkier, uh, we've got X-Falls hitting for upwards of 2 million damage pretty consistently. And we're pairing a lot of lucky hit chance on this build so that X-Falls procs as consistently as possible. The next thing to understand about this build besides the X-Falls doing a lot of damage for us is that we are a crit focused build. I've actually removed all of our burn damage scaling. Anything that was increasing our burn damage is gone from this build. We are fully focused on crit damage and doing as much damage as possible with our fireballs. And to pair with that, we've got some of the most ridiculous crit chance that I've ever seen. So right now I'm sitting at 42% crit chance when I dash. 
Uh, I'm at 65% crit chance, uh, which is a massive amount of crit chance. Um, and then, for example, if I get any sort of kills, I'm going to get Sanguine Brace. Sanguine Brace is going to fortify us, and then I get another 8% uh, crit chance on top of that. So that's like 73. Uh, with the, another thing that I was using earlier, I was at 75% crit chance, uh, which is just ridiculous. Now, the way that we're able to get this much crit chance is through Esu's Heirloom. Esu's Heirloom was recently buffed. It's going to give us our critical chances increased by 30% of our movement speed bonus. So you're going to want as much movement speed on this build. One of the big ways to get it is actually dashing with these boots. Inherently, when you evade, you get 75% movement speed on these. Plus, they roll with base movement speed and movement speed after getting a kill, which will easily get you over the 100% movement speed mark. I've also got more movement speed on my amulet. And then when we go to my actual movement speed bonuses, just to show you how crazy this is, I'm currently at 143% movement speed with it saying movement speed cap is 70%. As soon as I dash, 200% movement speed. So we are capped out on our movement speed, uh, which makes this build feel so good because we're flying around. And we can also pair that with the ravenous aspect. Lucky hit up to a 20% chance to increase your attack speed by 40% of your total move speed. Well, we're movement speed capped on this build when I'm dashing around. Um, so we're getting 80% increased attack speed, uh, which is just a ridiculous amount of attack speed. And when we use our ultimate, our ultimate, we no longer consume any mana. So then we can just absolutely rain down these fireballs. The more fireballs that we get to proc, the more damage we get to do, but also the more chance for X-Falls and the more repeated X-Fall pops that we get. And then we get all of these crazy explosions uh, and all of this together leads to uh, one of the just craziest synergistic builds that I've played. Now that you get the base idea of how this build works, let's get into the gear specifics. So to start us off on our helmet slot, uh, I would recommend using the God Slayer crown God Slayer has a ton of synergy with this build. It gives us cooldown, it gives us max life, it gives us damage, but most importantly, it pulls in enemies. Now, all the pull is really nice, one, because we're using Fireball as our enchantment, which when an enemy dies, they explode, and the closer packed enemies are with this, uh, the bigger the like AoE damage explosions are, and also the more chance that all this damage is going to proc more X-Falls uh, because you're just grouping up everything so tightly, and those X-Fall explosions are hitting more enemies. Uh, so the God Slayer is really, really great in your helmet slot. If you do have a Shaco or a Harlequin Crest, uh, that is even better, uh, but this build synergizes really well with the God Slayer crown. Um, for your chest piece, this is where you're looking for as much defense as possible. I don't have a quad damage reduction chest piece. I'm still not even level 100, um, so I haven't really found anything too great yet, uh, but I got damage from close and damage reduction from burning enemies, and then we're using the aspect of disobedience to stack up even more armor. We are light on armor on this build, so disobedience is a must-have, um, and then getting another percentage armor roll is also really nice to have. Then for our gloves, um, we're using gloves of the Illuminator. These are like the very only like must have unique for this build. In my opinion, uh, they give you plus four ranks of fireball. They give you crit chance, fireball attack speed, a lucky hit chance to restore your primary resource. But more importantly, they allow fireball to bounce. Now, the reason fireball bouncing uh, is so nice is because not only can it hit multiple enemies multiple times, uh, but it can also hit the same enemy multiple times. Um, showing on screen right now should probably be a slow-mo demonstration of kind of how you want to space your character. And if you're spacing properly, um, which you just get used to, uh, you can have your fireballs hitting enemies multiple times, which will just straight up double your damage, uh, which is really, really nice once you get that spacing down. It's not that big of a deal, uh, but it just leads to even more boss DPS on this build if you're standing in the correct position. Next up for our pants, now, I was not using Tabalts up until about level 95. Uh, they are not needed for this build, but they are more damage. So Tabalts are going to give us more damage, and then whenever we activate our Unstoppable, we're going to get even more damage, and most importantly, we get 50 of our primary resource back. Now, Teleport gives us Unstoppable, Flame Shield gives us Unstoppable, and whenever I dash, I'm also Unstoppable because we're using Metamorphous. Um, so that gives us a ton of primary resource uh, sources, uh, you want your metamorphosis power to be as low level as possible uh, because the duration of this, you basically need to wait for the duration to um, to kind of come to go away 
to get that unstoppable again. So at a level one metamorphosis, you only have to wait two seconds to get your resource back versus a level three metamorphosis. You got to wait four seconds to get 50 of your resource back. Uh, so that can be a bit of a pain. Now, if you are not using Tabalts, and even if you are using it, uh, one of the greatest things to put on this build is the Prodigy's Band. Using a cooldown restores up to 25 of your mana. Originally, I was using Lucky Hit Restores, uh, just using the straight up use your cooldown. Uh, our Teleport's a cooldown, Ice Armor's a cooldown, Flame Shield's a cooldown, uh, Inferno's a cooldown, and Frost Nova's a cooldown. This means anytime you click any of your uh, spells, besides Fireball, you're gonna get mana back. So if you're having any mana issues at all on this build, I strongly urge you to use a Prodigy Aspect. However, uh, once you get the Tabalts and you get a uh, low level Metamorphosis and you're like practiced with it, uh, you don't need that and you can go for even more all damage dealt. Uh, we're focusing on a lot of like all damage dealt multipliers because they're also going to help increase the damage of our X Falls explosions, uh, which is why I'm using the Conceited on my ring, but we'll talk about that in a second. Next up, we're using Estus Heirloom. I talked about this in the beginning of the video. More crit damage, mana cost, tons of movement speed, and a ridiculous amount of crit chance. Uh, this crit chance is so good. Once again, we're scaling a lot of our damage off of crit damage, uh, so having a higher crit chance is going to massively improve your damage. Next up, we get to our weapon. Now, the best in slot weapon for this build is the Staff of Endless Rage. I originally wasn't using this, and then I tested at Nightmare 100. I tested with Lilith um, using Staff of Endless Rage versus using a wand focus. Now, let me explain the wand focus idea. The idea <clears throat> of using a wand and a focus is we get 15% lucky hit chance on our wand, and I was using a focus where I would get lucky hit chance, lucky hit chance with barrier, mana cost, all this cooldown, all of these quality of lives, plus we get two more aspects for a damage multiplier with um, whenever we have our barrier up, we do more damage to vulnerable, and we could crank up our attack speed even more. And this on paper was, I thought, what was going to be better than this staff because we would get more X-Fall procs, we get two more aspects. Um, however, that just isn't really the case. Uh, this staff giving us more fire damage, more core skill damage, damage to close, the multiplicative damage increase of inner flames, and 40% increased uh, multiplicative damage for our every third cast of Fireball when we're rapid firing these off, uh, as well as the AoE that they cover. I just found that I preferred the Staff of the Endless Rage. Um, if you do not have this yet, the like Wand and Focus combo works really well. You can stack up a ton of Lucky Hit, and then you get more X-Fall procs, and that on paper should be better. I just found that the Staff of Endless Rage was doing more single target damage and more AoE damage, and so this is why I'm using that. Next up, we get to our amulet. Now, on your amulet, you're really looking for movement speed and ranks of devouring blaze. Um, those are really great. If you can get cooldown and mana cost reduction, you're golden. Uh, any sort of armor or damage reduction on your amulet's also really nice. But the god roll amulet would be plus three devouring blaze, movement speed, mana cost cooldown. If you can get all four of those, that is a god tier amulet. Uh, I unfortunately do not have something that good. Um, all of my gear has been uh, pretty solo self found. Um, so that's what I'm using here. And then on the actual amulet, we're putting the increase, the crit strike damage of meteor and fireball by 60%, double this bonus against healthy targets. We are one-shotting most things, even in high nightmares, nightmare 100s with our fireballs. And that's possibly because we're getting 120% multiplicative, uh, damage against those healthy targets, which is going to help us one-shot those things. Then we get the fireball explosions more often, and it just is a chain reaction. This build is all about chain reactions. Then for our rings, X Falls, trust me, um, I tried it without. This build gets so much extra damage from X Falls uh, because it gives us a stronger single target and a way bigger proc than our fireballs could ever hit for. And then lastly, on your other ring, your real big important focus on your ring is crit chance and lucky hit chance. Everything else is great, but crit chance and lucky hit chance are your two most important. If you can get fire damage, that's great. If you can get damage to burning enemies, that's great. Uh, if you can get more crit damage, that's also great. I've got vulnerable here. Uh, max health would be nice as well, uh, but you're really just looking for even more damage, but most importantly, crit and lucky hit. And then I've got the conceited aspect that I deal increased damage while I have a barrier active, which we always have on this build, another multiplier for X falls and our... Um, our fireballs, but if you are not going to be using that, if you're having any issues with any mana, which I am not, uh, you can use a prodigy aspect to get all of your mana back every time you're casting any of our skills. For our enchantment slots, I kind of already covered this, but we're using fireball. Whenever we kill an enemy, they explode. Uh, we got the modifier fireball's critical strike damage is increased by 20%, increased to 30% when hitting at least three enemies. 
uh, even more big crit explosions when we kill enemies. And then Fire Bolt Enchant is the most important, honestly. Uh, we need burning damage applied to enemies. It's going to give us Devouring Blaze. It's going to give us our damage to burning. It's going to give us our x falls. Uh, it's really, really important. Now for bossing, um, I can take off Fireball Enchant because it only happens when enemies die. Uh, so for like Lilith, this doesn't do anything. I don't take off Fireball Enchant for like normal Nightmare Dungeons or Nightmare 100s. You just don't really need the extra damage. But for bossing, uh, if you're specifically trying to take this to Uber Lilith, I do put on the Frozen Orb Enchant just for a little bit of extra damage. Whenever we cast a non-basic skill, we have a 30% chance to cast Frozen Orb. Just a little bit of extra basic damage, and we'll get into that once we get to the skill tree. For our skill tree, we're just putting two points uh, into any basic skill to get down to our core skills. Then we're using Fireball uh, with the Destructive Fireball for more crit damage. Uh, we're coming over to Elemental Dominance. Your core and mastery skills deal 9% increased damage when cast above 50 mana. Uh, when we use our, um, our ultimate, Inferno, every single cast is going to get this 9% multiplier, which is really, really nice. Then we're coming over to our defensive skills. <clears throat> I'm using Flame Shield. Sorry, my, like, I'm a little bit sick, so I might be like coughing a bit. Um, but we're using Flame Shield. With Flame Shield gives us healing. I really like this. Uh, just another heal and more survivability. Teleport gives us the damage reduction. I'm not using Ice Armor's uh, nodes. I'm just grabbing Ice Armor for a little bit more uh, mana regeneration. Don't really find that I need the other things. we got so much barrier uptime. Uh, then we've got Frost Nova. With Frost Nova makes enemies vulnerable. Just another guaranteed vulnerable on enemies. It's pretty nice. Uh, if you're struggling with mana, you could use Shimmering. I just don't think you need it. Uh, we're putting one point into Elemental Attunement for the chance to reset defensive skills. Only need one point here. Um, this happens pretty often with this build because we've got high lucky hit, uh, which feels great. We're going Glass Cannon for more damage because of course we are. Then we're coming down to our Conjurations. Precision Magic, super important, that lucky hit chance. We're putting one into Align the Elements, and then three into Mana Shield. We're spending a ton of mana, so lots of damage reduction here. And then wherever we use a cooldown, we're getting more barrier. Once again, uh, we deal more damage when we have barrier, so this is really nice. Um, then we're moving down to our Mastery Skills. Here we're not grabbing anything besides our Infern uh, Inner Flames. We deal 18% more damage while we're healthy. We have a 42% increased crit damage against burning enemies. And if they're also immobilized, we deal 60% more crit damage to them. And then Crippling Flames. We've got a lot of lucky hit on this build again. Our Pyromancy skills have up to a 15% chance to immobilize enemies for two seconds. It's doubled while we are healthy. Um, this is really nice. If anything is going to survive more than a few fireballs, they can get immobilized and then we can deal even more damage to them. Then we come down... To our ultimate, we're grabbing Inferno with Supreme Inferno. Our Pyromancy skills cost no mana. This is so great because we've got a ton of attack speed. We can just spam our Fireballs as much as possible whenever Inferno is active. Um, we're grabbing three into Fiery Surge. Killing a burning enemy increases our mana regen. Uh, this is very noticeable uh, whenever we're killing enemies that are burning, which is all the time. Uh, that mana is just going to shoot back up. Once again, we don't care about our actual burning damage, so we're not putting any points into Endless Pyre. We are going to put three points into Warmth. Every one second, you heal for 0.9 of your maximum life for each nearby burning enemy. Healing increased to 1.8 from bosses. This is just a little bit of extra healing. I'm not using a Vampiric Power that's going to be healing us, so getting Warmth and using the Flame Shield that heals us is really nice. Otherwise, we could slot in a Vampiric Power that was going to heal us, and then we wouldn't need this stuff. Uh, but because we're not using one, I grabbed all the healing nodes. And then lastly, Asu's Ferocity. Uh, we're going to get increased crit damage um, against enemies above 50% life. And our fire critical strike chance is increased by 5% against enemies below 50% life. Uh, when we kill enemies, uh, kill enemies or hit a boss, we get both of these bonuses for 3 seconds. This is another 5% more crit chance, which would push us uh, currently to like the 80% crit chance mark. Uh, which is just ridiculous, uh, which is why crit damage is so great on this build is because we're benefiting from it so much. For like bossing slash Uber Lilith, uh, literally like you don't need to change the setup besides for Uber Lilith. Uh, you can take points out of Fiery Surge, killing a burning enemy increases your mana regen because they're not going to be killing anything and just put some points into Frozen Orb. Um, there's other places that you could take this from. You don't really need the like damage reduction uh, for spending the mana. Uh, you can put those points and then max out Frozen Orb. Uh, all this is doing is giving us, when we put this as an enchant, is just every time we cast, we have a chance to do extra damage. It's not needed at all. Uh, it's just one of the only things that we can really do to just give ourselves even more single target damage. 
because this is doing 14,000 damage, and it's every, every time we cast, we're basically having a chance to proc another 14,000 damage. So it's just a little bit more single target if you're looking for it, but not necessary at all. For our Paragon board, you can find the full version on our website, dpscheck.gg. I'm only level 98, so there's a few more points that I'm going to be picking up, um, but I want to walk you through everything that I'm using and my, like, rationale for it. Uh, also, all my glyphs are, I have one level 16, everything else is 15, uh, so there is so much room for, like, more damage on this build uh, if you want to take it all the way. Like, you could get all these glyphs to 21 and then just be doing way more damage. Uh, but to start us off, I'm using the Reinforced Rare Glyph. Uh, this is going to give us more damage reduction while we have an active barrier. We have a barrier up all the time and a 100% bonus to our rare nodes at the moment, uh, which we are going to be slotting in the very first board. Uh, the very first board is going to give us 40% non-physical damage, which scales directly with our fire and a ton more resistances. So I really like the placement on that. Uh, then we've got the Elementalist. This is going to give us whenever we deal fire, cold, or lightning damage to an enemy, uh, we're going to be stacking up up to 15% uh, multiplicative damage for 10 seconds. This is up all the time uh, because we have 10 seconds to do this window. So you teleport, you'd use your uh, ice explosions, and you're going to be keeping up Elementalist, which is really nice. Then we've got the Exploit Glyph. Exploit, whenever we deal damage to a vulnerable enemy, which is all the time, we're getting stacking uh, damage and we deal more damage to vulnerable enemies. Next up, we've got the Pyromaniac Glyph. Uh, this is going to give us an increase to our fire damage and damage reduction modifiers, as well as every time that we cast a Pyromancy skill, we're going to be stacking up more damage. We've got a ton of attack speed with this build, so this is basically permanently up all the time. Um, then we've got the Destruction Glyph, really important for this build. This is going to give us increased crit damage, and then every time that we crit an enemy, we're also stacking up more damage multipliers on them. And then lastly, we're using the Flame Feeder Glyph. Uh, this is probably the glyph that I would level up first if you're going to try getting into this build. Uh, Flame Feeder gives us increased damage to burning targets, and we deal 10% increased direct damage to burning enemies. Once again, this is not more burning damage, it's more damage to burning enemies, which everything we touch is going to get lit on fire. For the actual board, as I said, we're putting Reinforced in the first slot to get the bonus to Elemental Balance and Erudite. Uh, which is great. Then we're moving up to the Searing Heat board. This is really important. Pyromancy skills have a 10% increased crit chance and deal increased direct damage equal to 10% of your damage with fire bonus. We're maxing this out. So all of my fire skills are going to deal 30% multiplicative more damage and get 10% more crit chance. Uh, this would technically put us at 90% crit chance when this is active, uh, which is crazy. Um, then in this actual board, we've got the Pyromaniac. This is going to give us more fire resistance resistance, but more importantly, 20% more fire damage, which is very, very nice. Um, then we're moving up to combustion, more fire damage, more fire crit. We've got the searing heat. And then to the right, we got Keeper of Flames, more damage reduction from burning enemies, which is really nice. Then we're moving into the Enchantment Master board. In Enchantment Master, we're picking up Ruinous for more non-physical damage. Once again, this is a straight up boost to our fire damage plus damage to elites. Then we're moving up uh, where we've got Elementalist socketed. Here, this is going to give us another 20% non-physical damage and more resistances to all elements. Uh, more resistance here, more non-physical damage. That's awesome. Then we're moving up to the Burning Instinct board. This gives us more burning damage. So we're not taking this legendary node because we're not scaling our burning damage. Once again, uh, we are going to be coming here to grab more damage reduction from burning enemies, more damage to burning enemies. And then we've got the Flame Feeder Glyph. This is going to give us even more damage to burning enemies. And then we've got Kindling, more damage to burning enemies, more damage to elites. Then we're moving over to the left to the Elemental Summoner Board. We're coming through to grab Keeper of Elements to give us more non-physical damage and resistance to all elements. Um, grabbing Erudite, more resistance to all elements. And uh, I grabbed Conjurer here mainly just to grab these uh, Dex nodes. This is going to be where we socket Exploit Glyph. Exploit's going to give us that more vulnerable damage. Um, and then to the left um, of the Searing Heat Board, we're actually going to be going into the uh, Frigid Fate Board. Frigid Fate, we deal bonus damage to vulnerable enemies equal to 10% of the total amount of our bonus damage with cold up to a maximum of 30%. Now, you may be like, why are you using this glyph? Um, any 
of our increases to non-physical damage actually gets this. So I don't have anything that's increasing my cold damage besides my increases to my non-physical, uh, which is cold. So like, for example, this node, 20% non-phys, uh, that is actually scaling this. And with my last points, which I've got, I think like six more points, I'm gonna be picking up a bunch more non-phys so we can scale up Frigid Fate uh, because I'm missing a few like non-phys nodes. Uh, so we should be getting this up. And then we're also really important coming over here to advantage to get the lucky hit chance. Once again, we're scaling a lot of our damage with X Falls with lucky hit. So super important there. And that is our Paragon board. Guys, that is going to do it for the build video. I hope you enjoyed. This build has been an absolute blast. It is not as like broken as ball lightning is right now. But if you're looking to try something new on Sorik, looking for a change of pace or looking for a build that just blows up the entire screen, I strongly recommend checking this out. Uh, this is my first time getting Sorik all the way up into endgame. I've played a ton of Druid. I've played a ton of Barb. Uh, and I've been really, really enjoying Sorik. Um, and I plan on checking out some more builds, but this is the build that I've been leveling with. It took me all the way to endgame, pinnacle endgame content. And uh, if you're looking for something new or looking for something really fun, I really do encourage you checking this build out. I will catch you all in the next one, guys. Take care. Peace.